Of all the drugs available in New Zealand, by far the most popular is alcohol. It's cheap, it's easy to take, and you need not shove it up your ass to bring it into the country. The introduction by Parkia of alcohol and tobacco was not accidental or haphazard. It was first trialled on native children who took to the exotic vices with vigour. Settlers soon realised they had an untapped market. In fact, New Zealand was not so much settled as debauched. Maori called the liquor waipero or rotten water, but nicked it like nectar. While it's true that the story of New Zealand can be traced alongside the banks of a mighty river of alcohol, history tells another tale. A tale written by Wowsers, the Christian temperance societies who tried to put a cork in it. It was only returned servicemen who saved us from complete prohibition. After the war, they were in no mood for a boozeless nation. But the temperance movement had a partial victory that turned into an own goal. Their victory was to bring about the biggest thing to happen in New Zealand history. They forced the pubs to close at six o'clock. This was the notorious six o'clock swill. For over 50 years, Kiwi punters were forced to drink jowl to jowl like pigs at a trough. After racing to the pub after work, they only had one hour to get fucked up before going home to eat mutton and beat their wives. There were no chairs, no carpet, no music, no food, no women either because barmaids were made illegal in 1910. It was disgusting and venal. It was beer and absolutely no skittles. There were three countries in the world that had serious problems. Russia and Sweden were the other two. And they were the same reasons of restraint. Liquor can have very evil effects, and it's well proven that the rapid drinking of it compounds those effects. Between six and seven, drinkers make their unsteady way homewards, clutching their half dozens and half gallon jars. One of the side effects of the existing laws has been to make New Zealanders probably the greatest home drinkers in the world. I can assure you that in all our cities, small towns everywhere, at night, the streets were just 6.30, there were drunks staggering everywhere. How they got drunk so quickly, I don't know, but they never drank red or wine or anything, they drank beer, but it was the normal scene. Could have a bottle of uh, Clayton's paper. But not all attempts at prohibition took a legislative form. Thank you. In the 1970s, a product called Clayton's hit the market. The drink you have when you're not having a drink, Clayton's was a non-alcoholic syrup, a sort of bullshit bourbon that sadly fooled nobody. If only Keith Allen had developed a taste for Clayton's. Allen was a cabinet minister in the Muldoon government who was caught staggering home by a TVNZ news crew. In those days, drinking and governing was accepted, especially if one took the back streets. Excuse me, Mr. Allen. In fact, alcohol was almost considered an indispensable lubricant at the highest level. And, uh, okay, we'll keep on doing it. Uh... Performance-enhancing drugs have also played their part in the success of this country, but not just in sport. In the 1960s, broadcasters made use of a substance called oxyhydrolitherol. These innocuous-looking white pills, better known as Queenie, stimulated vocal inflection, making the user sound more English. Well, now it's just coming up to 13 minutes past 11. Not surprisingly, many of our most famous broadcasters were addicted to the drug. When the NZBC first started broadcasting, it was considered desirable to sound English. And the more English you sounded, the more you were worth as a broadcaster. GOFTA, the Guild of Film and Television Arts, bringing together actors, writers, technicians, producers, directors... At the time, Queenies were thought to have no serious side effects. ...coping in the aftermath of the disaster. Well, New Zealand women were the first in the world to get the vote. Do you think they've become a little bit complacent now? We now know the terrible long-term effects the drug can have. I was tired. It didn't work. I have apologised. But there was another drug that was to affect our broadcasters like no other. 
Something that would send a grown man sideways. Something beginning with P.